BestBookBits.com presents Disrupt You, master personal transformation, seize opportunity, and thrive in an era of endless innovation by Jay Samit. Published in 2015 and weighing in at 288 pages, in Disrupt Yourself, innovator and digital media expert Jay Samet reveals how to achieve your goals and permanently alter the status quo through the art of self-disruption. In today's ever-changing and often volatile business landscape, adaptability and creativity are more critical than ever. Samet describes how specific strategies that help companies flourish, challenging assumptions, pinpointing one's unique value and identifying weaknesses in the structure of current industries can be applied at an individual level. The written summary can be found on our website, bestbookbits.com. So without further ado, I bring you the book summary of Disrupt You. Bullet summary. Disruptions create a new market and business model. One disruption spawns a wave of disruptions as it propagates to different markets. You can profit without inventing by applying a disruption to new markets or creating an auxiliary services products. Other people's money is the best funding. To tap it, create opportunity for others with your product. Full summary. Jay Summit calls disruption the, the intense introspective process of questioning his assumptions about himself and his goals. With self-disruption, he realized he could accomplish what he before thought impossible. And he realized two things. If he can express problems as a series of challenges, he can build a team to meet those challenges. Businesses don't sell products, they sell solutions. Jay Summit says that the mentality of disruptors is that of seeing obstacles as opportunities. Disruptors constantly reinvent themselves and their careers and are never afraid of losing their jobs because they create jobs. To become a disruptor, you don't need an MBA or an engineering degree. You simply need to think like a disruptor. Disrupt You is Summit's way of teaching us how they do it. Chapter 1, In Defense of Disruption. Jay Summit says that disruption almost always happens because of technological change, but the impact of disruptions goes far beyond the technology industries. The author talks about the laser disc in which he had invested, feeling safe it would be the next revolution. It failed instead, and he learned that it failed because it tried to compete with old technology, the VCR. But for a disruption to happen, it must create a new market and transform the existing business model. Samet refused to give up, and he learned that failing is trying something that doesn't work while failure is throwing in the towel. And he refused to be a failure. The author says that big disruption often set out a chain of disruptions. For example, cloud computing, wearable technology, 3D printing, etc. are providing the chance of making a fortune with hundreds of related applications of the new tech. Sometimes in the simplest way, for example, while every entrepreneur were busy coming up with complex computing systems in the 90s, Samet's friend Billy made a fortune selling mouse pads and plastic floppy disk containers. With a big disruption underway, you should apply your unique experience and viewpoint to look for opportunities in parts of the market that others have overlooked. With his own company, Samet looked how the personal computers were disrupting non-technology related businesses. Since he came from advertising, he applied his own point of view to sell the first CD-ROM with stock photos in it. The stock photo companies hadn't realized the big opportunity that lied in the CD-ROM. In a period of endless disruptions, says Samet, the secret to thriving as a disruptor is this. Use an existing technology to disrupt a different business. A wealthy distributor then is one who captures the value which is released by distribution. The chapter ends saying that your corporate job isn't really secure, and it's not security that robs ambition, it's the illusion of security that robs ambition. Chapter 2, Become a Disruptor. Jay Summit says that being a disruptor is a state of mind. It's looking at opportunities in the obstacles you face to respond to setbacks as if it were new beginnings and he says it's been the silver lining business. The author says that every person who has transformed a business started with a personal problem and then took note on how many others shared the same problem. Branson started Virgin when he noticed how many stranded people there were at the airport and he chartered a plane. The girl who started the dresses for rent 
noticed how many girls shared the problem of wanting a top designer dress but couldn't afford to buy it. And the man who started an online university noticed how many students were drowning in debt. All these people shared a disruptor mindset. Instead of waiting for someone else to solve the problem or suffer in silence, they jumped in headfirst. Massive problem equals massive opportunity. Massive problem equals massive opportunity. The art of self-disruption. Jay Summit quotes the Buddha when he says, The mind is everything. What you think, you become. He says you must remove all definitions of self, internal or external, that limit your progress. Self-disruption is like undergoing surgery, but you are the one self-operating. It's not a comfortable process and it requires getting out of your comfort zone. The author uses the same value chain links used to describe businesses to describe our own personas. R&D takes input from environment and sees them as an obstacle or opportunity. Annihilate all beliefs holding you back. Design and production. Our actions in response to our perceptions. Avoid baby steps. Train to see the big picture. Go from solution to where you stand now. Marketing and sales. Do something you never thought you could do. That will change your perception of what's achievable. Distribution. How you spend our time and direct our focus. Think of how you can be more effective and do more of what you love and moves you towards your goal. Jay Summit focuses a lot on beliefs we hold and how they influence us. He mentions the Matthew effect. Children who are told they are smarter, do better. Children who are told they are smart, do better. Basically, you get what you believe you deserve. The author also recommends to visualize, and I recommend you get the book from his own personal suggestions. Chapter 3, The Disruptor's Map. Samet stresses the importance of having a map and a plan. Think about what you want to achieve, both in your career and outside your career. What do you want to achieve and experience? Work-life balance is about choosing what's important in your personal life and career and then place them in a map according to importance. Planning is bringing the future into the present so you can start working on it. The author stresses the importance of mentors, invaluable and often critical to disruptors' success. He says they are easy to find. Just read the blogs in your industry and you'll quickly find the luminaries you aspire to emulate. Last but not least, Samet urges us to get going. Time waits for no one and the number one regret of dying patients is they wished they lived according to their true self instead of following the expectations of others. Chapter 4. Building a Brand of One Jay Summit talks here about personal branding. He says for a long time he believed his work should speak for itself, but he realized that's not true. Our personal brand often speak for itself before we even have the opportunity to open our mouths or show our work. A few great ideas to grow your personal branding. Public speaking. Many conferences are desperate to find speakers and the more niche your topic, the less competition. Certifications, especially from big brands, so you can put their logo on your business card or CV. Big brand endorsing. Big publishers need people to write for them, and your story on the Huffington Post makes you a columnist. Guerrilla marketing. Having stars use your product. Particularly interesting were the also techniques Jay Summit described for getting a dream job, such as buying AdWord impressions for executive who are very likely to Google themselves. And chapter 5, Disruptors at Work, the value of entrepreneurship. Jay Summit says that big companies are too busy finding other big companies to often pay attention to future disruptors. The author says that the big organizations are built for efficiency, not innovation. Management is rewarded for achieving more of what's already proved to be successful, and trying new paths is often a career suicide. Almost any initiative that could cannibalize or kill the existing revenue generators face strong internal headwinds. Basically, the whole culture is strongly biased towards safe and short term, which ends up being non-safe in the long term. So big organizations prefer to overpay for a new promising startup than do the internal investment required to do the disruption themselves. And this is all great news for the disruptors. Most Silicon Valley millionaires indeed didn't become millionaires by building profitable businesses, but by selling to bigger and established companies. 
disrupt in from within. However, Jay Summit still managed to disrupt from within at his stints at Sony, EMI, and Warner. He says the trick is to get what you want by giving the company what they think they want. And of course, never complain that the current management doesn't understand you. It's always up to you to communicate to them in a way they will get it, which is by presenting the new idea as if it were an old one. Always pitch your novelty through the familiar lenses. And when you receive a no to his project, Samet understood another huge lesson. You can do whatever you want in life as long as you find someone who is willing to pay for it. Chapter 6, In Search of the Zombie Idea Jay Summit says that every time you get a great idea, your task is to find a way to kill that idea. Do it yourself and early or the marketplace will find it and you will waste time and money. The faster you can kill bad ideas, the quicker you can pivot to successful ones. The faster you can kill bad ideas, the quicker you can pivot to successful ones. Speed to fail should be every entrepreneur's motto, says Summit. And when you can find a big idea that can't be killed, what he calls a zombie idea, then go ahead with it. The big idea. Jay Summit says that the eureka moment of the big idea is a myth. Big ideas are actually easy, but they don't come from moments of brilliance. They come from careful and methodical observation. He says you have to look at the existing value chain that is most easily upended. Look for the link that will shift the most dollars away from the present setup. Uber, for example, one link of the taxi chain, disruption, and shifts the money from thousands of small cap companies to one centralized software. The next step is to capture as much of what unlocked value in the shortest possible time. The author encourages his students to look at their lives and write down every problem they encounter and every possibility of disruption. The stealing ideas myth. Jay Summit says that the most common misconception of keeping your great idea undercover or else someone will steal it is baloney. If your idea is original, people will say it won't work. If it's not original, people will say that it's already X and Y company doing it, so why should they invest in it? Also, falling in love with your great idea is silly. Your goal is to kill it and attack it until what's left is a zombie idea. Chapter 7, Pivoting Your Energies. Jay Summit says that pivoting is a skill and a difficult decision, but it has to be done. Get rid of your silly emotional attachment to your original idea and change course. Stay in the course too long because changing is a tactic admission you were wrong is a common mistake. A great way to decide when the time has come is Dana. Dana has no ego and makes an excellent co-pilot, the author says. It may disappoint, but it never lies. So invite it anytime you can. Chapter 8, Unlocking the Value Chain. Chapter 8 deals with the potential identifying links that are costing you too much and that can be safely discarded. For example, Circus Soleil got rid of animals which were the most expensive link and focused on the most profitable and value-adding parts of the show. Chapter 9, R&D, Unlocking the Value of Waste. Chapter 9 of Disrupt You repeats the key idea that disruptors don't have to discover something new, but only discover a practical use for their new discoveries. Jay Summit says that there are billions and billions worth of research in universities that could yield to huge new disruptions, and major disruptions underway only looking for new users. You only need to look. And if you don't know where to start, you can crowdsource the development of your invention. A website like Quirky is such an example for bringing the product to market via crowdsourcing. Chapter 10, Design Disruption Through Aesthetics. Design Disruption focus on the art of simply building something better. And Chapter 8, Production, Reuse, Repurpose, Recreate. Jay Summit stresses again that for an innovation to be successful, it must not just create value, but capture it. Unless the world improvement is your goal, then you have Wikipedia and Craigslist that only displace industries without capturing the value. With his company, Jasmine Samet was making money only when he was hired to produce courses. He was like the old scribes before Gutenberg invented the movable printing press. Then he contracted his big customers' brands and proposed to sell their courses to other brands with their logo in it and he'd give them a revenue share. Now Summit was making money even while sleeping.
He talks about the revolution 3D printing will unleash and how the copyright laws will be easily circumvented again by everyone who wants to. Those who are cling to the status quo will lose. Those who recognize the inevitability of such changes stand to benefit the most. And chapter 12, marketing and sales. Differentiate and disruption in the sales model can be as revolutionary and disruptive as the product itself, says Samet. The challenge is not in coming up with a new and creative marketing campaign, but rather in developing completely new sales strategies, channels, and business models. Differentiation of the sales model can be as powerful as differentiation of the product itself. I invite you to read the book for further examples. Chapter 13, Distribution, Unattained Value. Physical dollars have been replaced by digital dimes in many industries, and yet several companies have figured out a successful model, allowing them to capture the greatest value. They did it through distribution while disrupting the product's ability to maintain profit margins. Distribution, Samet says, seems to be higher value link in the digital age. Amazon, eBay, and iTunes squeezed the producers' profits and amassed a fortune for themselves. And a new generation of entrepreneurs is connecting the world without ever having to create any content themselves. Chapter 14, Capital Revisited, Other People's Money. I love Summit's take on Other People's Money, OTM. Venture capital and borrowing can be a great way of expanding your startup, but whenever you can, OTM beats them all. To use other people's money, you need to create opportunities for those who have more capital than ideas and entrepreneur wherewithal. It's your chance to monetize your creativity and go-getter attitude. In a nutshell, the secret to use other people's money is to find someone else's problem and make your product their solution. The secret to other people's money is to find someone else's problem and make your product their solution. When working for Sony and trying to launch the company's own e-store for music and against the much more powerful iTunes, Summit managed to get free partnerships with Rock Events and McDonald's. Especially the partnership with McDonald's was not easy and had a crazy twist in the end. The way Summit solved it is genius, and I invite you to read the book for it. Chapter 15, Disruption in the Era of the Crowd. Summit says that the easiest industries to disrupt are those where inefficiency is your only competition. The example is the real estate industry, where investing was complex and time demanding. Websites and services allow investors to simply put a small chunk of money in a project of their choice, easily disrupt an industry that was so inefficient at its core. And chapter 16, Disrupt the World. The last chapter is about the disruptive process and attitude applied not just to industries, but to countries and political regimes. The example Summit uses are the Arab Spring and the Syrian revolt against Assad. Albert, I'm not too sure that applies well seeing the results in hindsight. Jay Summit makes a last great example with bottle recycling though. He says passing the bill to recycled used plastic bottles seems so very difficult because of entrenched benefits. But when the bill gave potential new profits to the local bottlers, it became immediately easier and embraced by everyone in the industry. The message is that to solve a dysfunctional political system, a business approach may be needed. My note, also on the top of a business approach, it's a human approach that is needed. The example was, after all, a simple application of the rule of social exchange. Epilogue, the self-destructors manifesto. Jay Summit reminds us that to change the world, we first have to start with ourselves. And once we do that, our future and our world future are far more manageable than we realize. And that's a wrap on Disrupt You by Jay Summit. Subscribe to our channel now for future summaries and check out our website, bestbookbits.com, for the written summary and audio. The website is amassed with hundreds of book summaries from the classics to the current. Have a browse to help further your education through the power of books. Like, comment, or share if you got something from this summary. Thanks for watching and have yourself an amazing day.